Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Enhancing Your Data Resiliency with Veeam and IBM Cloud. This webinar event is brought to you by Veeam and IBM Cloud and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is David Davis of Actual Tech Media and I'm excited to be your moderator for today's webinar. Before we get started, there's a few things you should know about your console. First off, we encourage your questions in the questions tab. It's just to the left of the slides window. If you click on the questions tab, it's there that you can enter your questions about today's topic. We'll be doing a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the event. And we have experts from Veeam and IBM Cloud standing by to answer your questions electronically during today's presentation. We also have a number of handouts available for download in your audience console. And finally, we'll be announcing the winner of the Amazon $300 gift card at the end of today's presentation on the live event. If you're watching this on demand, I'm sorry the drawing has already occurred. The prize terms and conditions can be found at events.actualtechmedia.com. On today's event, you'll hear from experts at Veeam and IBM Cloud, specifically Mr. Tim Myers, business solutions architect in the VCSP engineering team at Veeam, and Mr. Jordan Shamir, offering manager at IBM Cloud. Now, before we jump into today's presentation on how to enhance your data resiliency, I'd like to set the stage with a short overview on the state of data protection in 2020. You don't have to look very hard to find someone in your community of IT pros who's been impacted by cybercrime. We hear about companies and government organizations of all shapes and sizes being hit with ransomware and cyber attacks frequently in the evening news. One statistic found that a new ransomware infection, not just an attempted attack, but an actual infection, will happen every 11 seconds by 2021. Now, the cost of these attacks can be overwhelming, costing hundreds of millions of dollars in some cases and putting businesses out of business for good. And that's why smart IT organizations are improving their data protection stance and their data resiliency with the most modern data protection solutions available. Because just as you expect the Googles and Facebooks of the world to always provide 100% uptime, your internal users and company executives have come to expect the same 100% uptime for their internal company applications and data. There's no more acceptable outages. There's no more weekend maintenance windows. The expectation is now 100% availability. Now, for many companies, this level of uptime, this level of data resiliency and data security are something that they've never achieved because it's just too complex, too hard, and too expensive. But dare I say that with today's modern data protection solutions like Veeam combined with public cloud, this level of uptime, resiliency, and data security are possible and even affordable. From polls that we've done at Actual Tech Media and from the tremendous popularity of our data protection events, I know that most IT organizations aren't happy with their current data protection solution, and they're looking for more innovative, more affordable solutions when it comes to data protection. Now, to help you in this search, I've compiled my list of what I believe are the most important traits to look for in your next data protection solution. The first one being a highly secure solution. Security has got to be at the forefront of any data protection solution that you choose. You need at least three copies of your data, with two of those being on different storage mediums and at least one of those being off-site. The well-known 3-2-1 rule, if you will, and that data must be protected from attack through encryption and other data security measures. Now, not only should backing up the data be fast, but even more importantly, when you're hit with ransomware and you have to perform a mass recovery, the recovery of that data must be high performance as well. And then with massively growing data sets, your data protection solution needs to scale at the same rate as your data. We can't put a cap on the size of our data and we can't put a cap on the scalability of our data protection solution. And then whatever data protection solution you choose should be able to leverage public cloud intelligently because you're paying for what you consume in the public cloud. And it should give you the flexibility to choose the cloud that best fits the needs of your business. To sum it up, my list of traits of today's modern data protection solutions and what to look for in your next data protection solution, here's a quick list of key traits. 
security, speed, scalability, resiliency, the ability to leverage cloud, but do it intelligently. And the bonus trade is just make it easy. Now to learn about the latest innovations in Veeam's data protection solution and the many integrations and capabilities they offer with the IBM cloud, I'm excited to hand it over to our first presenter. Take it away, Jordan. Thanks, David. You know, I'm super excited to be here today. You know, Tim and myself will be talking about how to enhance your data resiliency with Veeam and IBM Cloud. I think when we when we dive into it and we say, you know, what is Veeam and IBM, right? IBM is a multifaceted en entity as well as Veeam. And the beautiful thing about our relationship and our partnership is that Veeam is integrated throughout the various regions of IBM, right? Veeam is completely compatible and, and works with any IBM storage and system units, including our IBM Cloud Object Storage. Where I think we'll focus on mostly today is within IBM Cloud and our multi-cloud hybrid cloud strategy, where Veeam is an orderable option that supports a heterogeneous environment that can be ordered through IBM Cloud, including you know, VMware, SAP HANA certified servers, non-virtualized environments, as well as our public cloud instances. And then lastly, one of the things that we will touch upon is a fully managed service. One thing that we are seeing is, hey, I don't want to be in charge of my backups or my DR strategy. How can I have someone manage that for me fully? And that's where our IBM GTS resiliency practice comes in. And so kind of kicking off before diving in a little deeper, we're looking to say, hey, what is Veeam, right? So Veeam is a cloud data management platform that backs up and provides resiliency management and DR for a host of different type of environments. They are cloud compatible. They work with IBM Cloud, AWS, and Azure. They focus on SaaS-based solutions as well as a variety of different virtual as well as physical environments. And where Veeam kind of looks at is, you know, providing the monitoring, the analytics, the orchestration, and then obviously the backup and replication. And Tim, this is where I just kind of want to hand it off to you to kind of, you know, elaborate a little bit more, more deeply on what, what Veeam means by a cloud data management platform. Veeam's cloud data management platform really incorporates our industry leading backup recovery and replication features of Veeam backup and replication alongside the management and monitoring capability tools of Veeam One for what we feel is the most comprehensive availability solution. Today, we're fortunate enough to have over 300,000 customers, including 74% of the Fortune 500, that trust Veeam to protect their business critical data every day. We really got our roots by offering data protection for VMware hypervisors, as Jordan kind of mentioned. We rapidly expanded to being able to support Hyper-V, and then added a vast array of storage integrations, such as HPE, NetApp, Dell, IBM. We expanded our worldwide leadership by partnering with a network of managed cloud providers. We continued innovation supporting physical machines and multiple enterprise applications, including Oracle, RMAN, SAP HANA, and more. All of this combines into a solution that brings reliable data protection to all of the workloads with the freedom to move those workloads where you need them the most, and the ability to leverage your data to accelerate business innovation. Thanks, Tim. So kind of focusing, you know, what is IBM Cloud, right? So IBM Cloud, we, we really pride ourselves on three pillars, right? Secure, open, and enterprise. And what we mean by open is looking at the future and the general, you know, what's the next generation, right? We look at Kubernetes, Istio, Resi, any kind of K-native application. And this is something that IBM Cloud was very unique in. IBM Cloud is standardized on Kubernetes for the past couple of years. They support over a thousand plus enterprise clients running Kubernetes as a service on IBM Cloud. And we have over 19,000 different clusters of Kubernetes in production today. Security. So one of the really unique things that we do is we focus on security leadership. And one way that we do it is through our HyperProtect crypto services, where we provide the highest level of data encryption orderable through IBM Cloud, where you actually use our, our mainframe as a service to be able to provide this, you know, FIPS, you know, 1, 140 uh, dash 2 level 4 compliance. But I would say one of the most unique things that we do is we really focus on bare metal, right? That's one of our uh, very strong solutions. And within our bare metal servers, you can actually get full control of the bare metal environment. So you have full administrative control. You can even see the serial numbers for compliance traceability. So when you think about going from on-prem to the cloud, it's a little bit ubiquitous or analogous because I still have the, you know, the 
compliance serial number if I need to audit it, or if I need to bring anything existing today, I can with very little change. And then lastly, enterprise grade. We focus on enterprise solutions. And one of the, our you know, claims to fame is we are the number one VMware public cloud in the world. We have over 2,000 clients running VMware and IBM Cloud. But what we look at kind of the next generation of cloud workloads, as we like to classify the 80%, how am I going to bring these workloads that are an amalgam of, you know, potentially AIX, uh, Z, SAP, mission critical, VMware, and how do I match that with Kubernetes, right? And that's where we really pride ourselves on being kind of the enterprisers. I like to call it not as, you know, from a sexy marketing term, the heterogeneous cloud where you can run a variety of different applications in IBM Cloud all within one data center, uh, reducing latency, but also allowing you to kind of optimize and bring the existing environment you have today. And so just a high level, right, IBM Cloud has over 180 different cloud service offerings, right, stemming from obviously compute, um, you know, infrastructure as a service, the databases as a service to our AI and analytic tools. And this is something where, you know, Veeam is fully integrated as Veeam is the only orderable uh, backup and DR vendor that spans all of IBM cloud infrastructure and something that we're, you know, very excited to see what else Veeam can do in the future to support our platform as a service offerings. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to, to Tim to kind of walk through Veeam on IBM cloud today. When we talk about Veeam on IBM cloud, there's two key words that come to my mind. One of them is simplicity and the second flexibility. And when we look at the benefits that were put into the solution, we really wanted to make the deployment of the overall data protected solution within IBM Cloud simple. And so one of the things that we're really proud of is the fact that you can do a single click deployment from the IBM cl Cloud portal when you provision your set of resources to be able to back up and protect them with Veeam. For those existing Veeam availability suite customers, Again, as Jordan mentioned, you have full bare metal and hypervisor access. And the reason that that's very differentiating and important is because there's a number of features that we have that have been part of the Veeam portfolio for quite some time. Instant recovery, whether it's a virtual machine, instant VM recovery or file level recovery, our different explorers for the applications that we have, all of those things traditionally have required full integration with either the bare metal server or the hypervisor. And that's something that most cloud providers don't offer today. It's a key differentiator for the IBM cloud solution that you have the full access and flexibility to leverage the solution in the way that you see fit. There are many different deployment options. Again, looking at the breadth of the portfolio, you have the ability to protect both virtual and physical workloads. Jordan talked about the object storage integration with IBM cloud object storage. And one of the key features that we'll, we'll try to highlight a little bit as we go along, but the customer doesn't pay for inter IBM cloud uh, backbone connectivity charges. In, in many cases, when we have this conversation around cloud, you'll hear these things around egress charges. It's easy to get your data in, but if I wanna move it, then there's a penalty or a fee that needs to be paid. And that's one of the key differentiators in this particular solution where IBM doesn't charge for that because of their security and compliance portfolio and the GDPR integration that's built into the Veeam availability suite, uh, we feel that data protection is, is very ideally handled in this particular solution. So we've got a few use cases that we'd like to cover today. The first use case is going to be the intra-cloud backup use case. So within the IBM cloud as an existing customer, maybe you've deployed a bare metal server or two, you've got an ESX host, you may be using the VCS solution, so a full virtual center or vCenter managed type of instance, and you need to be able to protect those workloads. Back to the single click provisioning capability in the IBM Cloud Portal, you provision Veeam, you attach the storage that you wanna be able to leverage for the storage repository, and the data protection capability is, is there and available. You have a multitude of options to choose from in terms of the type of storage that you want to use, back to that flexibility word that we talked about earlier, whether you want to use file or block level storage, uh, endurance, performance, direct attached, those options are all available. It's customer specific. You also have the ability to leverage the cloud object storage solution uh, as an available S3 target as we talked about before. 
So certainly substantial flexibility offered here to meet whatever customer requirements that may be necessary. In this particular example, maybe you've got an on-premises solution that meets your needs today, and you're looking for a reliable way to get a secondary copy of your data to an offsite location. In this particular instance, you could leverage the IBM Cloud for that. When we look at the object storage or the IBM Cloud object storage solution, we can see that as a way to tier your backups to CAUSE. CAUSE is, a, is the acronym there for Cloud Object Storage. And you can certainly provision that storage, add it as a repository, uh, be able to have a low cost mechanism to be able to store your long-term retention uh, and storage needs. The next slide in this particular scenario is where we talk about migration and disaster recovery. And so if you have that on-premises data center and you've got a Veeam deployment there today and you're looking at how can I either conduct a migration, maybe I'm finally ready to make that transition uh, and, and take that step forward and migrate all of my workloads to the IBM Cloud, or perhaps you wanna leverage the IBM Cloud strictly from a disaster recovery planning scenario. You wanna have those resources available and provisioned and in the case of an unplanned or unexpected outage, you're provided with the capability to fail those resources over. This is a scenario that we leverage a capability inside of Veeam that's called Cloud Connect. It's a service provider only option and it's integrated fully into the IBM Cloud support to provide that easy, seamless, automated failover and migration capabilities. And this is really what we're gonna look at from a new offering perspective that's been available, Jordan, I think for the past couple of months now in IBM Cloud. And if I remember correctly, you guys have seen such a huge uptake in the amount of interest uh, that, that people have been expressing over doing POCs and trials and, and really being able to leverage this capability, right? Yeah, correct. And, and, and like you said, Tim, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but the really enticing thing is for anyone consuming Veeam on-prem, it's a very, very you know, resilient, robust, and cost-effective DR tool because the beauty of it is you're not charged for any DR licensing right, within your own Veeam console. So you don't even need to learn a new console, right? Within your own Veeam console, what you do is you just establish kind of a offsite repository. You essentially take a URL and you point and click into a, you know, a virtual data center utilizing the cloud director. So, I mean, obviously, Tim, this is something we're going to demo, but we are extremely excited that we've, you know, integrated this offering and we're seeing a lot of value to our customers both from a Veeam perspective, because you know you can utilize if you have Veeam availability to do DR and backup almost seamlessly. Um, yeah, definitely. And Jordan, if you just go ahead and advance the slide there for me, I think there's an animation that we wanna roll out there. The other option here too would be consider that maybe the customer is very interested in Veeam and they're also very interested in moving to IBM Cloud and they don't have the on-premises Veeam infrastructure deployed today. Well, they can certainly go into the IBM Cloud back to that single click deployment that we talked about earlier and they can provision their Veeam infrastructure along with the resources that they provision for IBM Cloud, and then be able to manage the on-premises servers that they have to be able to back those up and send that data to the cloud as well. So this is a scenario here where, I mean, either Jordan or I could, you know, we could uh, draw straws over, over what the content of the slide really is. But in effect, the idea here is that there's a worldwide Veeam presence on IBM Cloud. IBM Cloud exists in over 60 data centers today worldwide and growing, and we're very uh, happy and honored to say that Veeam is currently available in each of the IBM Cloud data centers that are offered today. Perfect, Tim. And I think one of the unique things that you, you touched upon earlier, and we're, we're talking about you know, resiliency and cloud data management, replicating between any of these data centers is for free, right? We do not charge you, and it all goes over our secure layer two backbone. So if we think about kind of best practice for a DR or backup environment, it is having something that is off-site, right? So if I want to have my production environment in Dallas, and then I want to do DR to Washington, D.C., giving me that different geography or kind of geographic diversity from a resiliency perspective, that's something you can absolutely implement and not get charged for that essentially cross data center replication. And that really goes into one of our, you know, kind of great stories coming up here with Mobius. So Mobius is a multi-line service provider. And so what this means is how do I have multiple telephone numbers on one phone? So, you know, kind of given the need for separation between personal and professional, Mobius works with some heavy regulated industries such as finance, telecommunications, and healthcare. 
And so a lot of Mobius' largest customers are uh, Telstra, Sprint, um, and a variety of different kind of financial services companies. And so one of the things that they needed to do is they wanted to say, hey, we want to be more agile. We want to move to the cloud, but we need to maintain, you know, very high level of security and compliance. And more importantly, we need a very robust DR strategy. And so when we look at kind of what Mobius did, which is pretty cool, is if you see kind of the, the bluish uh, the bluish dots, right? So they have production sites in Dallas, Mexico City, London, and Sydney, with DR sites in Washington, DC, and Singapore. And so some of the, the beauty of what we were able to do is they said, hey, we want bare metal and hypervisor access to meet our compliance requirements. We're able to check that. One of the unique things that we're seeing is standardized and scalable global architecture. So Tim talked about this earlier with our vCenter server offering. They were able to actually deploy standardized architectures and that they were able to choose across these different regions. So they had kind of a ubiquitous plane. So all NSX was on one version, all of these sphere was on one, not kind of disparate um, environments. And they wanted to be able to utilize the cloud, right, to provision compute networking storage as needed, right? And one of the really cool things about Mobius is when we looked at their DR strategy with Beam, is we were actually able to save them thousands of dollars, you know, thousands plus dollars, uh, you know, every month and then yearly. Because if you look at what I'm doing is, even if I'm doing a daily backup job, I'm moving from my two or my four production sites into my two DR sites, I'm replicating potentially terabytes of data a day or, you know, terabytes of data a week. And so that cost, you know, maybe nominal initially, if you compound it every day, it becomes very, very expensive. And because of this, we were able to really enable Mobius to set that best practice DR architecture that they needed to meet for their compliance while not having to pay an additional expense for it. And that's one of the really cool things about this network backbone um, and something we do harp upon because when you think about more with, you know, the, you know, kind of what David talked about earlier, the need to be able to scale, the need to be able to be secure and resilient. One of them is just you know, physical isolation from where your DR and production site is. And we do not believe that there should be an additional expense to enable a, a best practice architecture. Um, and so one of the really cool things that I'm gonna hand off to Tim to talk about is our new uh, Veeam implementation with our VMware Solutions shared environment. Thanks, Jordan. This has been a, a, a long time coming in the IBM Veeam relationship. We, we've certainly had many, many conversations together as a couple of organizations that work very closely together about how can we offer a solution that's secure, that's multi-tenant, that's self-service, that keeps in line with that simple and flexible and reliable theme that, that both companies share so passionately. And I really feel that the VM on IBM Cloud for VMware Solution shared solution is, is the culmination of all of that work. And so what we'll look at here on the slide, just kind of real briefly, is we're going to have the notion of a VCD org. And, and from an acronym perspective, VCD is short for vCloud Director. It's a product that VMware has had for many, many years that is that multi-tenant, private cloud, self-service portal product that they've had. That, very mature, they've continued to innovate. Uh, it leverages software-defined networking alongside of it from an NSX platform standpoint. And so what happens is inside of that organization, we have the ability to instantiate what we call virtual data centers, which are assemblies of compute infrastructure that are made available on a per tenant basis. And we've incorporated that with the Veeam backup and replication engine. And we've given it an opportunity to be automatically backed up by Veeam. The backup will occur on performance tier storage. And with new capabilities that we've built into the Veeam product that allows us to do the S3 integration with IBM Cloud Object Storage, not only are you going to get a local backup on performance storage, you're also going to get to take advantage of the cloud tier capabilities where maybe you wanna do an immediate copy secondary copy of those backups and have that automatically placed out on IBM Cloud Object Storage, or you wanna leverage the tiering capabilities where we're going to move the oldest backups off of that performance tier and down onto the Cloud Object Storage. So again, single deployment, this is a fully managed solution. 
so there's no real concern there in terms of, well, maybe I don't know vCloud Director, or this, this is all great, but, but multi-tenancy uh, management and administration is not something that I'm comfortable with at the moment. Again, as a fully managed service from IBM Cloud, you get to leverage the expertise of the team. They take not only responsibility of the infrastructure availability uptime, leveraging all of the capabilities that they have in their portfolio in terms of security and compliance and automation and orchestration and analytics, but it really kind of allows you to focus back on your applications and customers, which is where most people want to be today. So the summary for this is that when you deploy infrastructure into the new IBM Cloud for VMware solution shared solution, it's automatically going to be backed up by Veeam. We're automatically going to implement what we're going to call that three to one rule where we're going to have three copies of your data stored on two different media types, one of them off site. And in the IBM Cloud standpoint, what that means is that they won't necessarily all be in the same physically, uh, geographically located data center. They'll certainly be leveraging both the, the virtual machine itself sitting on its own storage. You'll have the performance tier storage where the backup of that virtual machine will occur. And then you'll have the S3 object storage in the IBM Cloud object storage where the tiering or the secondary copy of the backup will also live. Thus articulating the three, two, one rule. And so we talked a little bit earlier about Cloud Connect. And Cloud Connect is a, a, a Veeam cloud and service provider capability where we introduced the idea of being able to take an on-premises workload and be able to replicate that to another destination. The destination being IBM Cloud in this particular scenario. A little bit further detail, the destination will be that vCloud director instance that we talked about earlier. So isolated, encapsulated, secure, multi-tenant infrastructure, self-service portal, single click deployment of Veeam. And that's really where we're gonna focus that, the demo that we're gonna do here in just a couple of moments. And so what happens is you have the ability to leverage your on-premises infrastructure for Veeam backup and replication. That infrastructure can be managing a virtual infrastructure. Again, uh, most cases our customers are VMware customers. And basically, as you procure the service, you're going to be given a destination. And you're gonna type in that destination inside of the Veeam console. It's going to go out and it's going to query those resources in the multi-tenant environment that have been assigned to you in that virtual data center. You're gonna have the opportunity to establish a replication job. And what's going to happen when you do that is you're going to select one or more of the virtual machines that you wish to replicate. And it's going to stage a copy of those virtual machines in the IBM cloud solution, uh, leveraging the Veeam uh, Cloud Connect replication capabilities. And when you're ready to do a migration, you're ready to do a DR test. You have an unplanned event and you need to do a failover. Well, now you're going to be in the position of being able to synchronously fail over those VMs, minimizing downtime and you know an unplanned outage. The one thing that we wanna make sure that we highlight here today, and we're gonna mention this a couple of different times, is that we're firm believers of, of seeing as believing. And, and we could certainly sit here and talk to you for quite some time today about what the features and the benefits are and, and talk about those things like simple and flexible and easy to manage and easy to understand. But one of the things that we really wanted to do is we wanted to make this offer available to everyone. And so what we're offering today is a special promotion. It's a $500 credit. Uh, there's a link here posted on the screen. And what that is, is that's going to give you the ability to basically try the solution as it sits today. Whether you wanna do a test, a proof concept, engage with us, uh, both on the IBM and the Veeam side to maybe put together a test plan, we're gonna provide you with a $500 credit to get that, that process started. A Couple of items to note, it's for you specifically for the IBM Cloud for VMware solution shared, the multi-tenant environment. It's only going to be uh, available until the end of June. You've got 90 days to consume that $500 worth of credit. Obviously there's standard terms and conditions that will apply. And it's only going to be made available to new and existing customers that have the specific workload requirements that we'll deem that are a good fit for this particular solution. 
So we've got a link here on the left-hand side of the slide. There's a blog there that has step-by-step -step guidance on how you can sign up for this offer and take advantage of it. So please do, we encourage you to. And it's demo time. So from a demo standpoint, you would simply log in with your credentials, as you can see Jordan is doing here now. And once he gets logged in, we'll actually access the, the VMware Shared Solutions infrastructure and when this infrastructure gets provisioned to you as a consumer, the one thing that you're gonna be looking for is a public DNS name. And that public DNS name is going to be our Cloud Connect gateway that we're gonna to need to put into our Veeam Backup and Replication Console. So as Jordan gets logged in here, uh, Cloud Connect uses a standard port 6180. Uh, this is all going to happen over the public internet. There's no VPN or site-to-site uh, -site connection that has been pre-established here. And we've identified a VM already um, appropriately named Jordan Test that is going to be the subject of this particular, uh, this particular demo. So when you actually get to the reserved instance here uh, that Jordan has went to and you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen under connection details here, that's where you're gonna find that service provider URL that I was speaking of earlier. You can see again that it uses our standard service provider port of 6180. And for your on-premises VM Backup and Replication Console, basically what you're going to do is you're gonna log in and you're gonna to go to the backup infrastructure section on the lower left-hand side. You can see that that's highlighted. And once you're in that section, you'll go up to service providers under the backup infrastructure there on the left. And you would simply go in and add a provider. We have a couple of providers here added already, but the, the, high, the highlight of this particular screen is the fact that the service provider URL is the exact URL that you're gonna put over here with the appropriate um, organization administrator credentials that would be provided to you when you sign up and become an IBM customer. So Jordan, if you'll go ahead and click over into the vSphere client for me for just one second. We have our virtual infrastructure here. You can see that we've got this particular VM that's already highlighted on the left-hand side that's called Jordan Test. It's powered on. And what we want to do here is we want to really kind of step through what does the series of steps look like if we wanted to be able to protect this VM. So if we go back into the backup and replication console there, Jordan, and go up to home for me on the left hand side, what we're going to see is, remember we talked about earlier, one of the first things that we need to do is we need to create a replication job. Now we won't do that for the purposes of this demo. We've already done that just for the sake of time. But if we go up to uh, replicas there on the left-hand side, we're essentially going to create a replication job. Once we have added the cloud credentials that we mentioned earlier, you're gonna have the option to choose a cloud host. And the cloud host is going to be the IBM cloud destination, right? That organization that's provisioned inside of vCloud Director and that's going to be the target for the replication job. So what you can see when you click on replicas here is you can see the, the name of the VMs that have existing and active replicas, their destination, in this case, they're all type of cloud, and whether they're, they're in the appropriate uh, state to be able to fail over. In this case, ready is good. So we see we've got a couple of here that say Jordan test. Uh, hey, look, there's one that says webinar demo. So if we wanted to fail this over in a planned failover activity, we can do a couple things. We can click on planned failover. We can click on failover now. Uh, those are available up in the ribbon as well as just a right click exercise on that particular VM itself. So Jordan, let's go ahead and fail that VM over and just kind of momentarily step through that process. So we'll click on planned failover. We'll see that the replication job already has the Jordan test VM in. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to next. We also have an opportunity to add any additional VMs uh, that may fall outside of this. We can certainly type in a reason if we want to, and then we would click on finish. And when we click on finish, go ahead, Jordan. The, the job will actually kick up. It'll instantiate the replication. It will um, basically make that virtual machine ready for consumption over in the, the VCD environment, right, that we talked about earlier, that VMware shared solutions product offering uh, that is the, the newest offering that IBM has. And if we, while we're waiting for that to fail over, if we come back over here for a second into the portal, what we'll see is a number of tasks that are running down here. 
we can see that the machine has been updated, we can see that the replica has succeeded, and we can actually see that that virtual machine is now running. So from a, from a demonstration perspective, again, back to the simplicity that we talked about before, we wanna add the service provider URL that's provided into the Veeam Backup and Replication Console. We wanna make sure that we create a replication job and choose Cloud Host select the VMs that we wanna be able to protect. We want to establish the schedule, how often that we want those replicas to occur. And when that circumstance actually happens that we wanna be able to do a planned failover or to do a test, we could simply come in here into the VM backup and replication interface and we can initiate that activity. Now, there's a second uh, circumstance, right? Some of you may be asking, well, what happens if it's a smoking crater in the ground scenario? and I don't have the availability to access the Veeam Backup and Replication Console. Well, there's a couple of key things that have also been integrated into the IBM Cloud Portal. And one of them is going to be the Cloud Connect Console or the Cloud Connect Portal. So we've already taken the liberty of opening that up, but just to kind of show you where that is back on this main screen, um, and we've resized it here just a little bit for the demo, but you'll see a couple of things here. One of them is going to be Veeam Cloud Connect, and there's a pop-out button right there with the information already in that's specific to your particular instance. And one thing that we'll talk about in just one second is going to be the self-service portal from a Veeam Backups perspective. So if you were to click on that Veeam Cloud Connect button there on the right-hand side, it would essentially open a new tab and it would take you to the Cloud Connect portal. You would type in your credentials. In this case, they're automatically populated for you. And after it does its authentication, it's going to take you into the Cloud Connect portal, and it's going to give you the ability to conduct any of those failovers that need to happen. Now, in this particular instance, this is leveraging something that we call a failover plan. And a failover plan is a series of steps that we want to have take place in the event of a failover. What we showed you earlier was an individual uh, virtual machine and kind of an ad hoc failover uh, initiative. But if you want it to be a little more prescriptive and a little more planned in the exercise, and let's say that you've taken your tier one VMs, top, typically those range somewhere around 10% uh, of an existing infrastructure, and you categorized all of them into a failover plan, you would be given a variety of options there to choose from, whether it be network uh, re-IPing, because your on-premises uh, network uh, subnet is obviously going to be different in most cases than what you would have in the cloud but you would simply create that failover plan, identify all those VMs, specify those options that you were looking for from an actual failover perspective. And then that failover plan would actually be instrumented and uh, uploaded into the Cloud Connect portal. And so when you would come over here to this section, again, from a holistic smoking you know, crater in the ground perspective, no longer have access to the Veeam backup and replication on-premises instance, you would still be able to fail those virtual machines over. So the second thing that we talked about, uh, it, Jordan, if you'll just go back to the IBM Cloud Connect, um, excuse me, the IBM portal screen there, is the Veeam backups. And so one of the other self-service capabilities that was, that was very important for this solution was to allow the customer or the tenant the opportunity to schedule their own backup jobs to restore their own data when they seem to fit without having to you know, do the traditional things like opening a ticket or placing a phone call or sending an email. We understand that the technical people wanna do, they're able to do. And so with our self-service backup portal integration into the IBM cloud, by leveraging this solution, you have the opportunity to go in and do exactly what it is that you need to do. You'll kind of get this high level overview of a dashboard that'll kind of show you just by default the activity that's happened in the last 24 hours. Uh, Jordan, if you just go over to the job section there, you can see uh, these are the status of my jobs. I could certainly create a job. I can edit an existing job. If a job failed, I could retry it. Tim, you want to create a job? We failed a VM over. We can create one if that's helpful. Sure, Jordan. Let's go right ahead and back up that Jordan test VM that we failed over. Well, so as he types in the name there, you can see we certainly have an opportunity to select how many backups that we want to keep. 
Um, we can decide if we want to keep certain full backups longer from an archival perspective. We'll change this just to uh, one from a demonstration perspective, right? And go ahead and click next. Simple as adding right inside of your vCloud organization and your uh, organization VDC, which VMs that you want to be able to protect. In many cases, uh, enterprise applications will want to check the box here that says enable application aware image processing. It's, it's a simple checkbox that's going to give us visibility and interrogation into the operating system to see which applications are installed for critical events such as uh, file level recovery uh, in specific Microsoft type of applications. You could certainly uh, enable um, guest file system indexing if you would like. You can set your schedule um, kind of there on the next screen, whether you want it to run automatically uh, or you want it to be an ad hoc type of thing. And then certainly we all love to be notified uh, via email, you know, whether the job is successful or failed, just so we don't have to check on it. And we, you know, we have a good indication in terms of what's happening. The self-service backup portal here that, that Jordan is kind of clicking through, uh, as you can see, it's a web-based HTML5 interface. You can certainly access this from you know, any device, tablet, cell phone, really, if you needed to. Um, but again, from a flexibility standpoint, um, we've all kind of grown accustomed to leveraging a portal from a cloud consumption standpoint. And you know, portal basically just means web browser, right? So we've done the replication, we failed over the VM, we've talked about how we can uh, do self-service backup and restore capabilities within the portal. We've highlighted the steps necessary to actually get started and where you can find that information uh, in the IBM portal. Um, Jordan, what else? Do we have anything else, um, you know, time allotting here that we, you think that would be beneficial for our audience to see? You know, I, I don't know what would be beneficial for them to see. What what we recommend, Tim, based off what you said earlier is, you know, play around, get started with it, right? There, there's a reason why we're given a $500 credit as, as much as Tim and I like to believe that, you know, our, our voice is, you know, convincing and commanding and everything. We, we know that seeing is believing or actually trying is believing, right? So we, we highly recommend get started, um, utilize the credit, utilize the promotion and if you have any questions around how to get this set up or started, you know, we're happy to continue this conversation going forward. You know, when we created this offering, you know, Tim and myself, IBM and Beam, we made this, you know, we designed to make this as simple and as transparent as possible and handling a lot of the automation and, and the simplicity for you. Um, so we very much so uh, recommend just playing around with it and we're happy to feed, you know, get any feedback or advice you would like to give us. Yeah, and there's certainly a lot of technical detail that we weren't able to cover today just because of the time allotment for this particular webinar. But uh, there is going to be some time here at the end for Q&A. Uh, there's obviously um, a follow-up opportunity, whether it be uh, IBM and Veeam together to really kind of dive deeper into uh, the architecture and design concepts and recommendations of, of how this um, shared solution was put together just can't encourage enough to kind of take advantage of that $500 credit, right? If you think about any existing workloads that you have that would be good candidates for this, um, you know, please click on the link, follow the process, right? We'd love to work with you uh, and, and, and really kind of highlight the key capabilities uh, of this new solution, right? And how it can provide a positive impact on your data protection and, and, and cloud strategy. I think with that, as we're coming up here to uh, the end of our time, David, I believe I'm going to hand it back over to you. And, you know, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the questions in the Q&A that we've been receiving and uh, see if we can interact with our audience a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, great presentation, Tim and Jordan. Thank you so much. Uh, we do have some questions for you from the audience. Uh, while we do those, I'm just going to bring up this poll question. The poll question on the screen says, what additional information would you like about the Veeam and IBM solution that you learned about and saw for yourself in the demo uh, on today's webinar? 
So we'll just leave that up and let's see, lots of good questions are coming in. If you have a question about the solution, now is the time to get it in. Uh, I wanna make sure, uh, Jordan and Tim, are you with me? Yay, David, we're with you. Awesome, awesome. Uh, all right, well, really cool demo. Again, thank you so much for sharing the demo. I always love when uh, presenters take time to do a, a demo on an event. I know it's not easy, uh, but it, it turns out so well, and we all get to see the product in action. So let's see, first question that came in, they're asking, are there any ingress or egress charges for the replication service? No, um, you know, so ingress is always free. But within IBM Cloud data centers, there is no egress charge. So if I want to go from Dallas to Sydney and then Sydney to London, there's, there's no charge associated with that. Okay, nice. And that's a big question that comes up a lot when people talk about getting data in and out of the cloud. So it's good to know that there aren't any charges associated. Um, next question that came in, they're asking, um, and I, we may have answered this one in the chat, but I want to make sure that everyone hears the answer as well, that is, which Veeam products are used for the DR service with VCD? We, we yeah, use David, Veeam. I'll take that one. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Tim, sorry. Uh, yeah, no problem, Jordan. Uh, so the, 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 there's two key products that are part of the solution. Uh, one of them is kind of our flagship product, it's what we call the Veeam Availability Suite. And the Veeam Availability Suite is really going to be for not only providing the backup protection for the virtual machines that reside within the IBM cloud uh, environment, but also for the managed service where maybe you're looking to have IBM also manage your on-premises backups. And so our Veeam availability suite is really kind of the core platform that provides those capabilities. The second piece to that is what we'll call, and we've talked about it during the webinar today, is called Cloud Connect Replication. And that's the, the actual component that allows for the staging, if you will, of that virtual machine in the IBM cloud, the failover plan capability, uh, automated, you know, single click failover. And um, yeah, I mean, those are the two, those are the two key pieces. So Cloud okay. Connect is a, is a service provider only uh, option. And there's certainly a URL information that we can provide, you know, if you're interested in looking for more information on that. And uh, David, back to you. Okay, excellent. And about Cloud Connect, I know a common question is, is that a, an additional product that the customer has to purchase or is that just included with, with Veeam Availability Suite? So in this particular example, uh, because it's an IBM Cloud offering, the Cloud Connect capability is, 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 built, into the, is built into the platform. So there would be no additional charges incurred for a customer looking to consume that capability because it's just a key technology that's built into the overall service offering. Nice, nice, okay, I like that. Uh, let's see, uh, next question that came in um, is how can I use IBM Cloud to back up Office 365 data? Tim, did you wanna take that one? Uh, sure thing, David. Uh, there is a Veeam backup for Office 365 service offering that IBM uh, came to market with earlier this year. Uh, it's a, um, again, fully managed opportunity for customers that are consumers of Office 365 to be able to have all of their information, whether it's OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, Exchange, et cetera, all of those capabilities, right, backed up uh, into the IBM cloud. Uh, again, there's a URL uh, that kind of highlights the announcement of that offering, a blog post on the IBM website, where we can certainly provide that in the chat for those customers that are looking for more information. Okay, nice. And actually, here's a related question that came in from Brian. He's asking, do I need a certain version of Veeam to access Veeam Cloud Connect? And is Cloud Connect used to back up Office 365? Or how does that work? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so today inside of IBM Cloud, uh, there's a couple so there's a couple different products at play here. The Veeam Availability Suite, uh, they're currently running 9.5 Update 4. Uh, they're definitely plans to upgrade to version 10. As you know, all Veeam customers know that our version 10 has been out for a little bit. And then in the Backup for Office 365 perspective, there's a separate product that is uh, Veeam Backup for Office 365. For, we're in version 4.0. Uh, with a you know with a hot fix that's available for that, and so when you look at the the capabilities that are there, um, 
those folks that are consumers of the IBM cloud service actually get to see an opportunity where both products are kind of working in concert together to be able to provide that, that service provider related backup uh, service offering for the Office 365 infrastructure that needs to be backed up. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of masked a little bit to the consumer, but the technology that used is actually a combination of Veeam Backup for Office 365 and Cloud Connect, both working together for that particular service offering. Got it. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Um, another question uh, Charles is asking: uh, How does how is C data handled? Uh, that's a great question. So we have a couple different ways that we recommend to do that. Probably the most uh, common thing that we see is from a backup copy job perspective, where we would actually recommend that if you have large amounts of data that you're looking to move into the IBM cloud and you're a current consumer of Veeam, that you can create a local backup, a local backup file uh, kind of at the on-premises location. Uh, you can take those local full backup files and actually send them to uh, you know, your counterparts that are responsible for the, the IBM cloud infrastructure. Those uh, backups would then get uploaded into the service provider infrastructure. And on the Cloud Connect side, we would actually be able to do a rescan uh, of your tenant once those backups have actually been migrated over there. And then a new backup copy job could be created that would essentially allow you to consume and ingest those full backups so that you're not transferring you know, really large amounts of data over the wire. Interesting. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of companies would need to, you know, go through some sort of seeding process uh, to get started. Uh, another question that came in, and I'll direct this one to you, Jordan, um, about the $500 link that's there in the handouts tab. Uh, I want to remind everyone that that link is there. If you click on the IBM Cloud $500 promo link, that is. So if people go to that link, uh, they sign up for this. Can you kind of walk us through like what what happens next? So what what happens next? They click the promo. It's it's you know obviously it's five hundred dollars credit redeemable, where they actually get access or five hundred dollars to spend however they like within our multi tenant kind of VMware offering, right? So once they provision the environment, if they want to use it for Veeam for DR, if they're on prem using Veeam. They can essentially take that Veeam availability suite within their console, create an offsite data replication site. Once they create the site, they can connect to IBM Cloud using that URL and kind of what Tim and I walked through during the demo. And then they can do a, you know, a test failover of an application. And the beautiful thing about our multi-tenant environment is that you can pay you know, hourly, you can pay monthly, however you kind of want to pay for it. Um, so you can actually do a test failover. You know, beyond that, it, it's a general $500 promotion. So if you're not a Veeam customer and you want to use IBM Cloud or you know move your VMware Cloud in you know VMware environment into the cloud for a bursting use case, dev test, or even run production, this is applicable there as well. And the nice thing is, if you're actually running anywhere on this environment, either in Dallas or Frankfurt, kind of the options of where you can deploy, you can actually run. Uh, you can utilize Veeam for the backup as a service that we, we came about earlier. So, you know, there's definitely ways to move into a DR as a service or a backup as a service option as well. Very nice. I like this. So, I mean, this isn't a $5 credit or a $50 credit. This is a $500 credit uh, to use with IBM Cloud. So uh, everyone out there in the audience, don't forget about that link that's there in the handouts tab. Uh, just click on that link now. It won't be available uh, readily after the event, so now's a good time to go ahead and click on it. In fact, I'll bring up this slide uh, with more information about this, and actually the link is clickable on the slide as well if you mouse over that link. Um, let's see, before we go and before I announce the prize winner, I wanted to there's announce, or I, I'm sorry, I want to ask one more question that came in uh, here. Mark has a question about, do you support databases other than Oracle? Who wants to take that one? I've done an awful lot of talking today. I'm actually going to just be the gentleman here and, and let Jordan take that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we support uh, databases other than Oracle? Yeah, I mean, Veeam supports uh, a variety of different databases, right? They have plugins to SQL and, uh, you know, SAP HANA and, and a variety of different types. 
In IBM Cloud, generally, um, we offer a whole bunch of database as a service options, right? So if you want to get rid of Oracle or, you know, move from Oracle, that's also an option. I know we run uh, Postgres, uh, SQL as, as a service within IBM Cloud as well. So we, we support a, a whole bunch of different type of databases. Excellent. Excellent. Well, a lot of flexibility there. Um, a lot of flexibility with IBM Cloud. It, it does more than just uh, disaster recovery as a service, as, as Jordan mentioned. Um, this is a great offering, a generous offering uh, from IBM and Veeam here. Uh, if you click on the link, again, you get a $500 credit uh, once you sign up for that promotion. It uh, looks like that's all the questions we have and pretty much all the time we have on today's event. Before we go, I want to announce the winner of our Amazon $300 gift card that's going to Katie Sherbein, Sherbein from Virginia. Congratulations, Kate Sherbein from Virginia. We'll reach out to you to deliver that gift card. Uh, again, I want to thank Veeam and IBM Cloud for joining us on the event. Uh, Tim and Jordan, great presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having us. Uh, and thank you to our audience out there for joining us on today's webinar. I hope that you learned a lot and had a good time. I know that I did. Uh, again, don't forget about that link that's on the screen or in the handouts tab. We hope to see you on the next event. Have a great day. Bye-bye.